Hi, uh, today I wanted to cover off the web server that's built into um, every QNAP NAS. Um, so by default it is disabled, um, so one of the first things I want to do is go into the control panel, and if you scroll right down to the bottom there, you can see under the Applications section there's a um, an application there called Web Server. Now there is a web server running anyway, obviously to gain access to the uh, configuration screens that we're looking at here. Um, this is a separate web server for you to host your own websites on. Um, so the basic thing I've, I've just done here is I've just ticked enable web server. I've left everything else as default um, and clicked apply and it's given me um, how to access it. So whether I'm using HTTP or HTTPS, they're down there and you can change the port numbers here if you want to as well. Now if I was to click this, so let me pop it up, um, I put a little temporary file there just just hosting that so it says here main web folder root so I want to show you what that looks like um, in the file system on the QNAP itself um, so when you do enable the web server it creates you a shared folder called web now in web it will be largely empty there'll be nothing in there so I've created this uh, index.html uh, which is what I'm seeing here so if I was to sort of open this with with text editor we can see that it's just web directory root the main web folder so that's all we're looking at there um, and that's what we're able to see when we we navigate to to that website that's hosted on this QNAP now if you had a, a few different websites, um, so in, in my case, um, the first one I'll create is I want to give credit to the person who, who gave us the idea uh, for this video, which was um, Safari, so somebody called Safari on our YouTube comments on another video. Um, if I click create a virtual host, I can create a domain name, so let's say I'm going to have um, Safari from YouTube.com. <coughs> And I'm going to choose uh, the root directory of their website uh, to be the Safari folder that I've created. I'm going to keep the port number port 80, which is the default for HTTP. Um, it would be a different number if you were using HTTPS. Um, so here we've got Safari from YouTube.com. So I've got that domain and then I'm going to click apply on that one. So now I've got a virtual host. So if I was to go to this website instead, um, so long as I've got that domain name, pointing at my QNAP and I've got the ports open on my firewall um, that match uh, the service I'm running for the web server which in in this case was just standard port 80 um, so when I go to the the NAS sort of main folder just its local IP address I'm going to get the the main um, um, index dot file or whichever file that you're running as your your website so that's that's the one i'm going to see which is the one we already saw there the web directory the main web folder root now if i was to open up a new web browser but this time i'm going to type in this domain the safari from youtube.com so if i open that up and go www dot oh, too many w's safari from youtube.com um there's his comment and there's the video um, so, uh, sorry, there's the web page. So this is a um, another website that's hosted on the NAS. So if I give you a look at what that looks like, so if I go back to File Station and go into the Safari folder that I pointed it to, we can see I've got an index and a safari.png. This is just that comment I screenshotted earlier. But if I was to edit this file here with text editor, we can see that this is the uh, the the new website so even though i've got one web server running um the web server is able to sense what domain you're coming in from what you're expecting and it will divert you to the appropriate folder that you've got set up um so we can actually do that with a lot of different websites so let's do a couple of others so if i go www.qnaptutorials.co.uk this one I'll put it into the uh, the web folder where I've created another website called QNAP Tutorials. Again, keeping the port number port 80. Um, and I'll add a, a third one as well. <clears throat> so let's say uh, www.qnapukyoutube.co.uk, let's say. <clears throat> and I'm going to point that one to the QNAP UK YouTube folder. Again, keeping port 80. Um, so now what I've got is I've actually got four different websites hosted in the, on this NAS. So I've got the one in the, the main web server, the main root folder, which was the first one we went to here, just the main web root folder, uh, which is looking at the, the root of that web share that we've got. Um, we've got the, the one for uh, the Safari user on YouTube that requested how to set up um, the web server um, on a QNAP NAS. 
Um, so this is this website. So now if I go and type in these other two domains, so I've got the uh, qnapukyoutube.co.uk. So if I go www.qnapukyoutube.co.uk, we can see that one. So that's a different address now. So QNAP UK YouTube virtual host. And the final one was the, uh, the QNAP tutorials one. So we'll do that one as well. <clears throat> so that's QNAP tutorials virtual host, QNAP UK YouTube virtual host. We've got the uh, video credit to Safari, the, the YouTube user that requested it, as well as the main route. So we're able to get um, a lot of different websites hosted out of one web server. Now each of these websites um, can be a lot more complex than the simple HTML I created. So you could have WordPress websites, uh, you know, you can start getting things involved with PHP. We do have PHP support on the NAS, uh, MySQL databases, things like that. So you can go as complex as you want. This is just a redirect so that depending on the domain name the user is requesting, um, depends on which folder name um, it gets diverted to. And each of these folders will contain the entire website that, uh, that you're referencing to. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, obviously, I can't do everything um, with with sort of web design, web servers, things like that. There's just so many ways to go about it. Uh, but this is a way to get yourself ready to host the site. So if you've already got a site that's designed your own domain, you can go log into the admin of that domain, um, point it to the IP address um, of your QNAP. Um, or the public IP address and then tell your router to forward that port through um, to the NAS uh, and then once it hits the NAS you're able to configure what the NAS does with that traffic when it comes in so when requests for a website come in uh, you can choose where they get sent to. Uh, so hopefully that was useful getting you up and up and going there with the uh, the virtual host function there. Um, if there are any questions or comments do, do let us know down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot. Bye.